morning everybody good afternoon good evening i am today going to discuss literary agents so i discussed before in previous videos that i am self-published i publish um under my own publishing company but i always talked about that i will also um go through the um curry curry um curry carrying currying process <laughs> um to also publish with a um big house publisher more well-known publisher and this is the direction i'm going mainly um because i am a independent publisher i'm a small publishing house i have expertise in certain fields and as you might know when you're um, going through this process you want someone who is expertise or experience in the genre that you're currently writing so most of my books are going to be published through my own company but as a marketing strategy and also um, having someone with more expertise in the market is always better. And it's something I want to take advantage of. So the book I am going to curry is, not going to tell you the title, but I mentioned it a few times before. Um, when I discuss my writing vlogs, it is a werewolf uh, romance, new adult novel, um, constantly under urban fantasy. It's set in Montana. Don't want to give too much information because um, agents, publishers, they don't like anything that has already been published. Um, and even talking too many telling too many details can um can be harmful in your search so um i thought it would be a good opportunity while i am doing the process to discuss literary agents um in general when you are searching for them so for me i use um curry tracker curry Curry, curry tracker. I really got it. I'm about to Google how to pronounce this damn word. Um, I use this. It's currytracker.net. So I use that. I have an account. I try to um, find ages. It's, what does it say? Database of 1,701. 17 and 100 agents. So that's a lot. A lot of agents that you have to just go through. But would also be really be beneficial is picking your favorite book and your favorite author and seeing who represents them so sometimes that can be a little harder um it's not like the books say oh yeah um so so agent is my agent they don't put that in the um copyright page they don't put that in the book a lot of times if they are listed it's in the um like opening page of um the thank yous and this is for this such and such person and my family and oh thank you to my wonderful agent and editors but um most likely i have not seen Personally, all the books that I've read and opened, I haven't seen the agent listed. But a lot of times, our friendly friend, our best friend Google, will give you the agent's information sometimes. Other times, you just have to be kind of um, a little savvy with how you're Googling, trying to get the information. Uh, J.K. Rowling's agent, James Patterson's agent. Jamila Stone was agent. Might start getting some more information. And you might be able to find it that way. Um, so those are two ways you can look up the um, agent 
maybe your favorite author, the favorite book. You're like, oh, I really want to be represented by so-and-so. Or you can use the Curie Tracker and find the agent that way. Now, with Twitter and social media, there was a thing called Pitch Wars, which has a good number of success stories. But the only thing is, I believe, Pitch Wars, Pit Mat, all that, everything combined, the um, creators, the people who are managing it, I believe, stepped down um, from that. So I am not... I have not seen, but um, I actually thought I might have saw the um, so the um, just recently the LGBT one, maybe pitches, but I'm not sure if that was um, affiliated with the pitch wars or if they were somewhat different, or they just remember the dates and they're continuing. People are going to continue. Mm, but I don't know if the agents and the publishers are going to continue as well. So you might still find Twitter as an avenue to find an agent. Not positive on that. Um, it's not something I'm going to focus on personally. Personally, I'm going to focus on my Google searching, um, searching um, with the Curie Tracker and also from previous experience of doing this way before I create my own publishing company, I still have literary agencies that I've saved that are my favorite or eh, that I just like, I think will be a good fit. So those are the three avenues that I'm going with. So when I'm looking for an agent for my genre, I'm definitely looking for the genre. That's the most important, doesn't matter if the agent has these famous awesome people if they don't represent books from my genre i'm not going to cure it's no point of sending them anything there's no point so please don't do that um no matter how popular they might be they can't help you succeed and most times they'll just outright decline you. A professional will not take on you as a client knowing they cannot do their best for you. So some agents are really good at romance, historical fantasy, women's fiction, but they don't want anything to do with the crime fiction genre or the sci-fi genre. So you really have to make sure that you're matching with the right person. And the very first thing you do is base it on your genre. Very first thing. So once you find them and you say, okay, these are a couple of agents that are um, representing my genre. Their, their experience in that genre, this is what they want. Good. Create your list, and then you need to start eliminating people. Don't just say, oh, they represent my genre. Oh, okay, they like um, paranormal romance. They like um, supernatural themes and such and such. You have to go even deeper. And deeper, I mean, is you need to find out as much as you can about them. <laughs> I do a very thorough search. So... When I'm making my list, I'm making my very initial list to say, this is the book I want to um, carry. These are the agents that are um, listing my genre under what they'll sell. After I do that, I look them up. Social media. Look these agents up on social media. Get a feel of their personality see um, if they uh, are active on social media, see what other people are saying about them. All of that first. I look at all that before I start getting into further examination of who that agent is. And some might say, well, who cares what people say about them? Or who cares how active they are? Some authors might say, 
well, I don't want to be very active on social media. I only have a social media because I think it'll help me get an agent or get published. Social media is very important in today's current times. And that's the only reason I started, other than, um, you know, MySpace and Facebook. The only reason I got a Twitter, the only reason I got anything else is solely for my author brand, for me to promote my books, talk about myself, etc. So when I'm looking at the social media for these agents, I'm looking to see their temperament. Very important. You don't want to get in bed with the agent who you have to have a close relationship with. Your agent and you don't have to be friends, but you want to be in frequent communication with your agent. You want to be from the very beginning, have a good, positive relationship with your agent. If you see on so on their social media that they are not um, responding in a good way, maybe they're, a lot of their stuff is more complaints, maybe it's... Um, they talk back to their um to people on social media or they might have very controversial opinions and you might say well so doesn't everybody sometimes no not on your business page and especially even in general some things need to be kitchen table talk I personally, everybody will have something that is controversial, maybe not politically correct, but you don't want to be in bed with an agent who is threading the line and might give you a bad image, whether it's fair or not. Cancel culture is severe. You don't want to be attached to someone. I ain't going to say one of the most popular names. Um... Because once again, controversial. I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'm not even touching it. A lot of um, people have been touching it, and I look at them every time. Like, okay, I don't know why you act like uh, this person ain't uh, still very influential and still making money, and uh, you know, it's a very small pool, and those people can um, communicate with each other. Those publishers, those other agents, those bookstores, they see, they see you. So if you are responding and you're commenting, you're doing things a certain way, especially if you're not already making them a lot of money, they're not going to give you the opportunity to make them money. I'll leave it there. But uh, I'm not even going to say the name. But whether it's an agent or other influential people the agent who might rub people the wrong way a lot can have them fired him or her fired can have them blackballed can have them not enter as many doors and circles this whole business is about communications connections and relationships so imagine if your agent is pissing off a lot of people. How can they promote your book the best? How can they get you published in general? Let's say, okay, they got you published. You think, oh, well, they might be an asshole, but they got a, um, a good number of clients and successful. They're going to get me in the door. What if they get you that publishing deal? What if? They negotiate that deal. What if because of their personality, they aren't able to get you the best deal possible? You still got a deal, but it's not the best possible. What if you get published and most times um, you don't always sign away right away to that publisher your film rights? Sometimes, most times you do. But a lot of times your literary agent is still the contact person for you. Still the person who's going to help get you that film deal, TV, movie deal. 
the person who's going to get you into um, other avenues, um, sometimes also foreign, foreign rights. So if you publish in English, publisher said, okay, we'll publish your book English. That's what we'll start off with. But then you want to publish in other languages. Your agent is with you for a very long time. So you have to get along in general. You want somebody who is going to be communicating with you on the regular. It's going to answer your phone calls. It's not going to just hit you the voicemail and never respond back for a very long time. And you want somebody who has good relationships with people. So look at their social media, see if they are, see their temperament and their personality. Sometimes you might say, okay, well, I don't really see any of that. I don't notice anything. They might not be posting a whole lot. They might be just posting about their client, their books. But you can tell someone's personality by the way others also interact with them. So you can also see how people are interacting with them. Are people interacting with them? Are their counterparts interacting with them? Is it just you and me, Jane, you know, smaller people? Are we just commenting? Or are there other agents, um, other people in the publishing world? Are they commenting? Are they interacting? That's important. Can, if they have connections and positive relationships, you will see that, especially now in the age of social media where it's very popular at the moment. You see agents and other people all the time interacting and you just get a feel of their personality and who they are. So um, that's the second level that I go to. After I do that and I say I eliminate the ones that I'm like, okay, I don't think we're going to get along. I don't think you're going to have positive connections. I don't think you... In a long one, might you know, keep your job, um, or especially if we don't. I don't think we're gonna get along. We 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 have conflict. It's okay. They might not be a bad agent. It just might be we aren't gonna have a positive work relationship. So that's fine. And then my list gets even smaller. And then with the after I eliminate eliminate. I go to another elimination process. And during during that process, I try to just Google them, find out any information, find out um, the books that they represent. And once I do that, once I find out who they represent, I look on like, what is it? Publishing Marketplace and other places to see what kind of deal they got their author. That should be probably one of the last steps, but a very important step. Don't, do not skip that step. Because one thing I will say, especially as a woman and especially as a woman of color, I want to know if you are going to fight for me the same way you fight for your white clients. I'll say it. I'll say it out loud. Controversial. Probably should edit that out. Um, I'm breaking my own rule that I'm telling you all. It's so important. What kind of deal are they getting? That will also let you know their experience and also give you a good indicator of their relationships and connections. How hard are they going to fight for you? If they have, they're um, securing very minimum low deals you might not want to work with them. You might want to look again and see how long they've been in business, maybe overlook something. But uh, even if they've been in the business long, doesn't mean they can always secure a very good deal. And for some, it might not matter. For me, um, the money doesn't matter on a general level, but it matters to me if it's on a disrespectful level. Don't give me an offer that's disrespectful. I, if the offer is a, um, a offer that is appropriate to what 
is similar to what you're sending and giving to others within the same um, kind of qualification, same genre, same book, you know, sort of um, markability. Um, that's fine. You know, sometimes you still want these publishers to pay even more, but I would be more accept accepting of that if that's the case. But if I'm seeing this agent has these four clients, one is minority, all three are white, whatever. And let's say two, the, the black and the white have the same genre, the same your and your mind. You're like, okay, this is going to be the same type of marketing, same, same, whatever, same publisher, but they get the deal where six figures, et cetera, seven figures, and you are getting a little chump change. You have to say no, uh, -uh. no, 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 no. Well, not you, but that, um, that client they're representing you should have red flags. It's red flag, red flag. Like, uh-uh, why is it that your minority client got this deal, but then all your other clients got this deal? It don't make sense. Like, were you not fighting? What happened? And I have to look at that. I have to look at who this agent really is. Are they going to fight for me? For me? And in general, are they fighting for their clients? So it might not be a race thing. A lot of times in this industry, it is. But we ain't going to talk about that. Um, that's a whole nother video. But if you see that their clients are not getting the type of deal you think you deserve, don't go, don't go with them. You see that they are not able to produce what you want. And it's okay. You don't have to go with every single nice or good agent just to get published. If you get to that last stage and you're just thinking, I just want to get in the door. I, I'll have a good relationship with this agent. Everything else, they cleared all the other steps. They cleared everything. Let me just get in the door. Maybe my second book deal will be even better. Maybe this, maybe that. That's fine. I respect it. I might do the same thing. Not really, but I might. Who knows? When you face with those type of situations, if everything else is in the clear and everything checks off, it's fine. Maybe you're not in it for the money. Maybe you just really want to get traditionally published and it doesn't matter if that agent is not able to produce what you really, really want. That's fine. But you need to make that decision. And you can't make that decision if you don't go through that last step of seeing who they represent, what deal they got. And most of all the deals traditionally published are on Publishers Marketplace. Get an account. I don't even know if you need an account. I had an account. Um, not positive if you need an account to search, um, just because I had had have one. So um, I'm not positive on that aspect, but use it. You might be able to Google, I don't know, let me see. You might be able to Google, what's one of those, let me say, uh, no, all of her books, I don't even say, I was going to say Sarah, I, I know all. Book two got her name imprinted in my mind. I don't have any of her books yet. Um, let me see, what book deal, ah, okay, I'll do namesake. Uh, what was the, I don't know, the book deal. For namesake by Jane Young. Let me see if it'll say Amazon reviews, reviews, reviews. Now see, nope, her website. Oh, you know, she had a let me look at her website. I always like looking at author's website to get inspiration from mine. Yep, so I don't see by just Googling. Um, check news. So, yeah, you might have to go to um, Last Legacy. Is it didn't? Mm, okay, that person didn't like the book. 
I have not read it, so I'm going to quickly get out of here because I want to read a book with fresh eyes. Oh, her page is minimalistic. It's cute. It's like, um, what do they call it? Like modern, contemporary or something like that. I don't know. So she only, I was about to say she only has to, oh, okay. So she got, oh, she, oh, that's the, why did I, I, the girl, the seat. The girl of the sea gave that. Oh, the girl of the sea gave that. I saw this um, just recently, and I didn't even pay attention to the um, author name on the cover. Huh. All right, let me put my curve. I am going way off. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, let me edit it. No, I'm not going to edit it because I'm going to look at it. Um, So that's the last stage I do. I look up what type of deal they're potentially able to get you and who they represent. It's also important because it lets you know their Chinese uncontroversial words. Um, lets you know their client base and who those type, those people are. Their race. And gender, are they going to be, um, are they representing diverse persons? That's important. And honestly, it should be important to you, even if you are not of a minority group. It should be important to you if who this type of Asian is, this person. Um, if they aren't representing anyone of a minority group, it ain't because we not out here. It's because they choose not to. And do you really want to work with somebody who chooses not to represent someone based on their race, sexual orientation, etc.? No. Um, mm -mm. That's going to, no, that's going to cause issues. Um, so those are the three main steps that I take when I am searching for a literary agent those are the things i'm looking for in an agent and the ways and sites that i use curry tracker google twitter social media and publishing publishers marketplace so it is um definitely a lot of things out there that will help you to weed out um who you want to send a, a curry to and I'll emphasize, I really just don't choose anyone just because you want to get in the door. Really, I mean, if the money part don't matter to you, that's fine. But you really want to make sure you are really, really going, just act like you're the FBI, okay? You really want to know as much as you can about your literary agent. You really, really, really want to. Um, so I'll give another video. I'll let you guys know how my search is going. Um, and let you know a couple of things. I might even just do a video. Um, might go ahead and do, well, no, see if I do. Per, if I do one for each agent, for each, each um, three, there three stages. I don't know. Because again, this is something for you to do. I don't know if you are actively trying to be published, if you should put that information out there. Because some of these people, you might exit out of your list because, oh, you know, it's just not a right match. But you also might exit them out because you find them controversial or you find them being a racist or whatever. And though it might be true, you can't put that out there just because they are in the business and you're not. They have connections you don't. They can stop you <laughs> from being in connection with some people. And you never know who they know. It's a very small community. So if you make someone mad, <laughs> you can definitely have them go and say, oh. So and so, gotta watch out for this person. And I think I really think they do that. They be like, uh-uh, mm-mm, nope. 
this person make sure you um put a block on their email address <laughs> you know they probably do they probably be whatever all right i'm getting off track again so um maybe i'll just go through my stages i'll do videos based on my stages the three stages and then maybe i'll just not give the name of the person i won't get the name i'll figure out how to do it i'll figure it out um because as an author author already and a small publisher when COVID, when things start, events and conferences, I'm going to be everywhere. As soon as a lot of things open back up, I'm going to be everywhere as possible. That's where my money's going, making connections so I can grow better as an author myself and also grow my company better. I'm going to be in, they probably going to be like, mm, uh -huh, I remember that email. Mm hmm. I remember that email. Well, I remember, oh, I saw that. Uh huh. Y'all, she can't be coming up. Nope, don't invite her back to the author. So I'm like, damn. All right. Watch what you say about um, people online. And I talked about that in the previous video. Authors, other authors, agents, publishers, editors, book cover, whoever's in the traditional publishing sphere, don't talk negatively about. Whether it's true or not, don't do it. And a lot of you all do. I see you on Twitter and book tubes and author tubes and everything else. But the oh, y'all damn dogs. Y'all need to stop. Just an FYI. Y'all need to stop because a lot of them, a couple of times, um, I've met some just based on um, college and communications and other things. They talk to each other. They know each other. Stop. You can do it if you are not planning to be traditionally published. If you are not planning to do any of that stuff anytime, that's fine. Go at it. Go for it. If you're a book reviewer, if you're not author, go for it. But don't do it if you are author or you want to be an author. Don't do it. Just my advice. All opinions. You don't have to listen to them. But those people gonna be there when you get there, when you want to get to the door. They in the same room and somebody else might go to the door and they say, hello, like, hey, I'm Jamila. I'm trying to come in. And they, the other person in the background, oh, that's who? Nah, don't open that door for her. Don't open that door for her. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> social media. Alright, I'm going to um, get off this video. All these daggone dogs bothering me.